The name Michelangelo has resonated throughout the world for five centuries. An unsurpassed artistic master in whichever medium he put his hand to, painting, sculpture, fresco and drawing. Even in the unlikely event you haven't heard his name, it's likely you would know of his masterpieces such as this, the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. Or his magnificent Statue of David, hewn from a single block of Siena marble. To be in its presence has humbled many a viewer and brought them to tears. The 16th century genius had an amazingly long and prolific career, and we are fortunate many of his works have survived. The British Museum recently hosted its first Michelangelo exhibition in 30 years. A collection of drawings, Michelangelo drawings, closer to the master. Well, he did have, uh, Michelangelo had a very, very long career. We know that he was working as an apprentice at the age of 12 and he was working until right at the end of his life when he was uh, 88. And he did all sorts, he was a painter, he was a sculptor, he was an architect, and as you say, he was a poet. And you see all those, the thing that links all of those except for poetry is, is, is drawing. He, he, before he began to paint, to sculpt, to, to think about uh, designing a building, he would do that on paper. Drawing was central to everything he did. The display featured 90 drawings, including a collection of thumbnail sketches and red chalk studies, which reveal the genesis of the painting of the Sistine Chapel roof in the Vatican Palace. Also on display are black and white chalk studies of the Last Judgment on the altar wall of the Sistine Chapel, architectural drawings for the Basilica of St Peter's, and the drawings of the Crucifixion, which changed in style as Michelangelo reached the end of his own life. I think you do gain an understanding about Michelangelo by looking at his drawings. You first you get an idea that he, how amazingly hard work he is, how driven he is. He's not somebody who's going to accept the mediocre. He's always going to keep on working and refining and working out ideas on paper until he's reached a, a satisfactory conclusion. And the other thing that we see is, is a really great religious artist. Michelangelo was somebody who really believed in heaven, believed in hell, and that gives his religious art an incredible uh, power. In many ways, the 21st century is fortunate to have a collection of Michelangelo drawings handed down to us. The Italian Renaissance sculptor, painter, poet and architect regularly destroyed his sketches. For example, the drawings for his famous sculpture of David are no longer in existence. Well, it's a very mysterious act why he destroyed so many of his late drawings at the end of his life. I think it is about, it's the ultimate act of power, is I'm not going to allow anybody to see my drawings, so I'm going to actually destroy them. Michelangelo himself did not want people to see the technical work that went into his final masterpieces, but many a viewer at the British Museum was thankful to have such a personal element of his work survive. Amazingly, if it was up to Michelangelo's father, his son would never have become an artist, who, like many of the Florentine gentry at that time, considered it to be beneath them. Born in 1476, he began a three-year apprenticeship at age 12. A peer of Leonardo da Vinci, it was Pope Clement VIII who commissioned him to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Despite his physical discomfort and pain, he completed the commission in 1541.